was uh, in my previous class, I was looking at some of the uh, association of amphiphilic uh, molecules and we said that bilayer structure, this is bilayer bilayer and similarly monolayer you can say one is monolayer and this is micellar structure, this is reverse micelle. Then I will tell you another important uh, association. There are numerous associations possible with this, you can have tubes, you can have tubes, long tubes with amphiphilic molecules, but these are some of the well known association of amphiphilic molecules. Then I will try, this is kind of difficult, but I will explain to you, difficult to draw, okay, but still I will not leave it, I am going to draw. So, I am drawing this structure, maybe I to only up to this, this is goes all the way. Okay. Now, Okay, like this. So, like this it will go all the way and this will also go all the way, all right. So, this is only a section. I explained to you that micelle means a, like, a, like a sphere, reverse micelle is also sphere and this particular structure what is this? This is a looks like a bilayer, bilayer, but this is also you, you imagine a football, a football, a say rubber football, okay. And that rubber, rubber has some thickness, rubber has some thickness, okay, is a uh, sphere with some thickness, and in the thickness is made up of this made up of these bilayers, okay, these bilayers. But if I, if I increase, if I do that with this bilayer thing, I make a rubber ball kind of structure, then it will be called unilamellar, unilamellar vesicles, vesicle, only one, so vesicle, unilamellar vesicular structure, okay, vesicle. So, vesicle, micelle and reverse micelle, these are three spherical association of way, different ways of spherical association of amphiphilic molecule. So, this we call unilamellar vesicles, but now imagine I have this vesicular, I am drawing slowly, hang on. So, this then I have another one. So, you understood that if you have this ball, the thickness grows, okay, grow all the way. So, that it is no more a unilamellar, but it can be multilamellar. So, multilamellar structure I cannot grow, I, I cannot uh, write, 
but multi lamellar. Let me write only multi lamellar structure, multi lamellar vesicles, vesicle. Okay. So, a vesicular structure can be unilamellar, that means only one unit of uh, thickness, only uh, a bilayer, okay, only bilayer if you will, and then multilamellar is several bilayer one after another. That means, it will go from here. this is unilamellar, then this is, this is bislamellar, right, then this, then this. So, this will go on like this, it will go on like this. Okay. So, I will have a multilamellar vesicle. So, vesicular structures can be unilamellar, usually in most cases we find unilamellar, but there are multilamellar vesicles are also possible. Okay. So, these I have drawn now and these are the main supramolecular association of amphiphilic molecules that is bilayer structures, micellar structure, this is a section of a micellar and reverse micellar and this is also unilamellar vesicles and multilamellar vesicle. So, these are the few well studied association of amphiphilic molecules and how do I know that I found a vesicles? Vesicles are very important, vesicles are they are everywhere in uh, human body, vesicles are transporter you can say transport, okay. vesicles are like vehicle. You put something in the truck and, uh, and carry it from one point to the other. Similarly, in biosystems vesicles will take something inside. So, you will take something inside and then form a vesicles with amphiphilic amphiphiles. Amphiphilic molecules are uh, several types. Okay. I will show you biological amphiphiles, uh, another lecture I have, do not have the structure here, but cholesterol those kind of structures those are very important okay, in terms of amphiphilics and all that. I will show them their structure, I cannot draw it, do not remember. Next time I will write in a piece of paper and show you. All right. So where are we? So similarly, vesicular unilamellar similarly vesicular structure they carry because unilamellar will have some space here. In this space, they will take up biologically active molecule and they will penetrate the biological membrane and after penetrating membrane, they will open up, they also open up. Okay. This can be destroyed by what? This can be destroyed by an ion, an ion can destroy that, completely destroy that and the amphiphiles will be all broken, all single single amphiphiles are running around if you put ion. So, an ion can destroy this vesicular structure or even micellar structure like that. Okay. All right. So, now these vesicular structures, how do you know you have vesicular structures? We know vesicular structure by way of, by one technique called transmission, transmission electron microscopy. By, 
by their transmission electron with the help of transmission electron microscopy and we can get what is known as transmission electron micrograph. So, you can get transmission electron micrograph and you can measure the diameter of this vesicular structure formed and all that. We have carry we have done so many of them, but however, unfortunately that I cannot draw. So, in my notes I will take some photograph, they are photographs actually we get in in the form of photographs, okay, TEM photographs. Those TEM photographs I will incorporate into my lecture materials, so that you can have a feeling for that, all right. So, we can get, so we have this, uh, so we can uh, have unilamellar vesicles and they are photographs also. Now, the question is how these are made, okay. I showed you their association or all that, but we will mostly be interested in vesicles, unilamellar vesicles, okay, because they are uh, present in biosystems and they do lot of work. So, unilamellar vesicles, how do they make? They take, there are many methods, okay. First is they take a, a solution of amphiphyne in a suitable solvent, you take that in a suitable solvent, okay, like an organic solvent, for example, ethanol or something, and then sonicate that ultrasonic, ultrasonic sound, they will pass through it, and that is a provides energy for this amphiphilic molecules to come together and then make vesicular structure. It depends upon the structure of the amplifiers individuals, but suppose I telling you that we are making only vesicles. Another method is that is what we used to do. We dissolve a make a concentrated solution of amplifier in say methanol. Okay. If it is highly soluble, it will not form your uh, vesicular structure. Then I put it in large amount of water. That means, say 1 ml of methanolic concentrated solution of methanolic solution of an amphiphile, we put it in 100 ml of water and then stir it and keep it because alcohol and water mix. So, therefore, it will mix and alcohol in water, my amphiphile is not soluble, that should be. So, my amphiphile is not soluble in water, but I have this amphiphiles in now, when I, when I mix, mix it with lots of water, then water's effect will be felt, because it is insoluble in water and amphiphilic molecules are hydrophobic and all that. So, they will try to come together come together and form vesicles. This is known as spontaneous method. So, spontaneous method, spontaneous method. So, we can make vesicles by spontaneous method and by sonication through sonication and stuff like that. And we can take their pictures with a tunneling electron microscopy. Okay. We can take their pictures from the pictures, we will know that yes, we got vesicular structure. What favors vesicular formation? Vesicular formation is favored by something called hydrophilic hydrophobic ratio that is a hydrophilic 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 
hydrophobic hydrophobic ratio there should be more hydrophobic so this would be less than 1 actually okay hydrophilic and hydrophobic ratio this would be less than 1 and that actually favors secondly is also bend because this thing actually bend bending means it will help in forming a circular a round structure so this hydrophilic and so, these hydrophobic tails must be bending, okay. it must be bending. So, that will also help in assembly of the amphiphilic molecules into vesicular structures. All right. So, this about it, the photographs I am not going to, uh, I'll, I, I cannot draw those photographs, but they come like this they come like this, uh, they come very well like this and we can measure their diameter, average diameter and all that. From there here you do not have any idea what is going on, but I will show you a picture, I will put them in my lecture notes. Okay. Electronically I can transfer it, not with my hand. Okay. Now, Another association of my final, finally, my another associ association of these amphiphilic molecules, which will be what happens, I am mostly interested in what happens with amphiphiles in air water interface. I have a container. I have water, put some water, put some water and then I take an amphiphile, this is my amphiphile. I take this amphiphile and dissolve this amphiphile, dissolve my this amphiphile in say dichloromethane. Why dichloromethane? Because dichloromethane has a very low polar, low polarity solvent, okay, and it will dissolve in dichloromethane. And dichloromethane is a low boiling liquid; it will not mix with water. So, if I dissolve it and then I put here some dichloromethane here, I dissolve it make the solution and take the solution in a pipette and then put drop wise throughout and then leave it as it is. After leaving at room temperature what will happen? Dichloromethyl will vaporize. So, now what I have? I have no dichloromethane. Okay. I have no dichloromethane here. What I have? I have pure water, water and air. I have water and air. Okay. So, I am now studying what is meant by what happens to an amphiphile in air water interface. So, amphiphiles will be like this. Here is water means hydrophilic. Okay. So, it will be like here and it will be hanging around in the air. Okay. It will be like this. It cannot be like this. Why? Because it is insoluble in water. It is hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means it does not like water. So, it will not be like this, never it will be
okay it will be something like this all kinds of you just so basically the hydrophilic part will be touching the water or could be inside the water also and the hydrophobic part is hanging in air they are in air and this is a mess mess means random random arrangement of amplified okay random and random arrangement of amplified so amplifiers so these are called the surfactants also that's why because a surface active so these amplifiers or surfactants will uh, will arrange haphazardly so this resembles a gas so mole these molecules are looking like gas gas like gas like that means gas molecules are gas molecules are moving here and there there is no uh, any any definite direction or nothing is random similarly these amphiphilic molecules are also random okay randomly play uh, randomly staying in the air and this is called a gas gas uh, gas like structure okay this is gas like now what will happen now i can reduce this i can put a i can put a barricade is kind of barricade ha huh? this barricade can be and this is fixed this side is fixed and this side can move if i move then what will happen if i move then all these all these will come very close to each other they will almost touch they will touch they will touch because why what i am doing i am moving it this this way so this movement will be very slow and it is done by a computer so slowly one is stopped one is fixed and this one is moving 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 so once they moves there is very little this fellows cannot go it it cannot escape and they cannot go inside with a normally pressure it has come up to this from here from here i moved it to this side this part slowly slowly moving so now this was this was like gas like okay this was gas like now because of this movement this has some sort of some sort of regularity if you agree with me this has some sort of regular arrangement of amplifying so when it is more regular amplifying then what will happen it is liquid like it is liquid like it is liquid like okay now if i further move if i further move if i further move then what will happen i have this uh, say head group 
and my uh, these things are coming up here. So, head group they were there and then they were like this. If I move it further, further it cannot go because they are touching, then what will happen? Some of them will go down, some of them will go down to relieve the pressure because I am doing too much here like that. It cannot go any further, but I am still doing, then what will happen? This will go here, then this space is there, then pressure is released. So, it will go inside, amplifier files will go inside if the pressure is tremendous okay? and then it will form my cell, it will form, it will reach CMC and form my cell. Okay? So, what I just described thus far, what I described in a very crude way with this schematically that is called a this this whole thing the whole thing is carried out in a laboratory dust free condition okay in a very dust free condition and it is whole thing is done by a computer your computer is outside and you are programming the uh, the how it will do how it will uh, speed and all that and then put this drop, close the door and go out and looking at the, your laptop or computer and seeing what is happening. Okay. So, it must be absolutely dust free, the water must be several distilled, several times distilled pure water. Okay. And then what I have just described to you is known as a Langmuir trough. Langmuir trough. What I have described to you just now is known as a Langmuir trough. Langmuir is the name of the scientist who first did this and he got Nobel Prize. So, you might say this is a simple thing he did and got Nobel Prize. What is going on? The reason is very simple. Reason is whenever we need absolutely planar, absolutely say molecules, uh, the thickness, known thickness, uh, known thickness of any material, then we must resort to Langmuir trough. Okay, so, this Langmuir trough, I will tell you I will tell you in my next class detail, okay. I will show you a Langmuir trough, how it looks like, okay. just a, sk a sketch and then I, I, the, what is, what it does and how can you get thin. So, that means, whenever we need any planar, a thin plates of a material, okay. how, how can we do? We can suppose I want to I want to have a thin layer of a chemical. Usually, what used to people used to do, people used to dissolve that in a solvent and put a drop, and then uh, rotate it very fast, and then evacuate it. Then what will happen? All the solvent will go, and then you get a layer of the material but that layer is not perfect, it never can be, but you need a perfect, a layer of the co compound of known dimension and throughout the, throughout the plate it has to be perfect. Then what we resort to? We resort to a Langmuir trough, okay. we have to use Langmuir trough and we have to get Langmuir Blodgett tree. So, Langmuir trough and you we do Langmuir Blodgett tree. So, that is what my next class I will be discussing Langmuir Blodgett tree. Blodgett
Langmuir Blodgett film. So, we have a thin film, okay, people have thin films lab and all that, they are very important in many technological applications. So, we can get Langmuir did monolayer land here, his student Blodgett is a lady, she also found multi-layer. So, both got Nobel prizes. Thank you very much. So, next time I will be doing Langmuir Blodgett tree. Thank you.